Hello! If your intention is to take on a new raid on content release, there are quite a few things that you can do in preparation and during learning fights to increase your group's performance. Little things that may feel small initially, but when put over the course of multiple days of progression, will save a significant amount of time. In this video, I'm going to share methods that my group has been using to help with taking on the new fights. Before Savage Raid's release, recently the normal version of the raid has launched prior to that. You can note the mechanics that happen in all the turns and write down the ability names and their descriptions. Usually Savage gets rid of all AoE indicators, so having their shape as reference helps a ton when solving puzzles. In the case of Ultimates, the source of most mechanics come from their original content, and you can prepare by researching these as well. Keep in mind that sometimes they change the mechanics, which was the case for Spear of the Fury in the Dragon Song War Ultimate. You should also write down Leap of Icons and their descriptions. There are also some universally common mechanics such as the Protein Clock Spots, Pairs and X or Plus orientations that you can have prepared for your team, as well as which players are part of mechanics happening on the west part of the map and who take part on the east. Assigning these positions beforehand makes it so everyone knows roughly where to go when talking about mechanics as a baseline, even when you see something for the first time and realize a specific orientation is about to happen. After taking note of all the known elements in the upcoming encounters, it's time to talk about group composition. For Savage, the first three fights benefit massively from having multiple racers in a team, read, two casters, and then switching to the composition that outputs the most DPS in order to make the final turns DPS check easier. While the raids have been tuned to match crafted gear, allowing a few mistakes or damage downs can turn an otherwise failed run into a success. Some fights can take advantage of Homegang as an in-wound for tanks, as it has shorter cooldown. You should still run a standard group composition because of limit break though. Next is the topic of loot distribution throughout the turns. Now that the loot pool is consistent, you can plan out who gets what based on their future best slot, or if you decide to run Dancer, boost the player that is going to get buffed. That same Giga Chad should also get the weapon tombstone from turn 3. Rest is matching crafted gear with the normal mod drops, some of the pieces are better for healers due to piety, and similar for tanks, you may opt for a raid drop instead of tenacity. In order to process what's going on in the fights, especially when seeing the mechanic for the first time, is to record your attempts and replay them to be able to dissect the mechanics without having to pull the side part. While the game is quite clear with most of its mechanics, they usually overlap with each other where you may not see the same spot without first checking it from a replay. Recording your attempts also allows you to gather different versions of the same mechanic, as many more complex mechanics tend to flip or rotate based on a cardinal or intercardinal, for example the Grand Octet in Unending Call of Bahamut. For recording software, I recommend Shadowplay for NVIDIA users, Real Life for Radeon cards, and for more customization and a universal option there's Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS for short. Each of these software have settings for local recording and options to change the quality to your preference. You can change the resolution and frames per second to match your game rig specs. Another useful feature is called the instant replay. If you don't want to record everything, you can set for example the last 2 minutes to be saved when you press the assigned hotkey. This allows you to instant replay for example when you die or when the group wipes to quickly check what went wrong. Once you have your recording, you may want to share it with someone else for review. You can either upload the full clip into a hosting service, or for example directly to Discord, but clipping the parts you need is generally the best approach, as you usually only want to show a certain part. The tool I use for this is called ShareX, where I go into the part I wish to share on the recording, record the screen with the program, and then automatically upload it to the chosen destination. Handbrake is another program that can be used to split video footage. If you want to share an image, snipping tool is the fastest, as you can crop a part of your screen that gets automatically put into the clipboard, which you can then send. This is generally used to capture debuff descriptions. If someone in your group is streaming, if past broadcasts are enabled, you can also clip or rewatch the stream from the archive. Another, perhaps the most critical part of fast progression, along with execution consistency, is the puzzle solving of new mechanics. There are multiple things that you need to take into account when reaching a new progression point before you state facts. Was everyone alive when the mechanics started? This alters the way debuffs are distributed and how mechanics are targeted. You also need to see a new mechanic quite a few times to be able to create a strategy that solves all patterns. You can also note on how mechanics target players and design the strategy around those known factors. For example, some mechanics only target the furthest player, like Brute Justice Super Jump, or the closest, like the rotating beams in Eden Prime, or in Twintania's case, a random target outside a certain range from the boss. Mechanics also are often targeted by role bases, sometimes all DPS get the same thing, vice versa for tanks and healers. For example, stack markers usually target healers. Also, when debuffs are being distributed, they usually follow some sort of pattern, or a certain role can only get specific debuffs in a variation. Understanding and combining these elements is the bread and butter of strategy making in this game, as almost every mechanic follows some kind of pattern rule and is not truly random. Last but not least, accuracy when creating a strategy. 
You want to be as accurate with the AUE shapes as possible, since you need to have space for 8 players to execute the mechanic, and this is made easier the more accurate your strategy images are. Most mechanics in the game are properly telegraphed, but sometimes it takes some effort to see the actual size of an AUE that you're trying to place, for example Brute Justice Apocalyptic Ray. Because the player's hitbox is very small, you can sometimes just get by with just making sure there's a safe spot somewhere, just having it smaller means avoiding the attack is harder, but the strategy could still be easy as long as there's a clear visual reference to the spot you are trying to go to. For drawing out the strategy pictures and ideas, there's a very handy whiteboard called Miro that has been our main tool. You can use it directly from a browser, or you can download an app. We opted for Miro because of its versatility. You can upload images, move and scale them freely on the board, and it supports multiple users at the same time, meaning you can work on the same strategy together. It even supports video upload, but for those purposes we use other platforms more dedicated to file sharing. Debuffs, arenas, player icons, AOEs, all in one place. I recommend zooming pretty far in so that the working space stays more organized. We had issues in the past where things were all over the place due to the default zooming. Raidplan.io is another popular choice in drawing out strategies. It has a few cool features not found elsewhere, like being able to switch role classes directly, and to create a sequence of slides for different mechanics under the same fight. Also has debuff support for some encounters. And if you need to get your idea out in two minutes, paint is your choice. You can make fairly representative images really fast, simple but effective. Most of the fights in Final Fantasy XIV are scripted to the point that you can write down the fight in a strict timeline without the fight changing on repeat attempts. There are some exceptions like Chaos, Hephaestus or Titan, but even these encounters just execute two main mechanic blocks in succession. Having the timeline is important because calling out when key mechanics are happening is useful in keeping the team aware of the encounter progress and what happens next. The standard markers usually note the cardinal and intercardinal directions on the map, but they can also be used for other things such as to mark pairs by color, sequence order, mark specific spots for mechanics, or absolutely making sure everyone knows where north is. My favorite, however, has to be the genius strategy from Yukob, where the corners of a marker are used to claim fanout spots. Another example for smart marker usage is using them for from A to B locations, such as Perfect Alexander's Almighty Judgment. Note that you can't place them manually like this anymore. There are also markers that can be used to note players or enemies as something specific. You could mark the tanks so that everyone pays attention to where cliffs are in case the boss rotates. You can mark specific targets to priority or to be avoided. You can mark players in order or the note pairs. It can be very helpful to have a note in hand for some mechanics to remind you what to do if you get a specific debuff for example. Here's an example for P12S. You can also utilize a personal echo macro that you press when you gain a specific debuff to remind you what to do. You can also make mitigation macros for raid wide intensive segments, such as the finale in Neo Excess or most of the final phases in the ultimate raids. When you're focusing on learning the fight at the current progression point, your group may have one or more additional players that are working on the sidelines. These players gather information for the team to be used in strategy making. This includes most of the things from the strategy planning section to recap, finding pattern variations in mechanics, figuring out how certain mechanics are baited, debuff distribution, AoE shapes, fight timelines, and so on. Having a player do this while the rest of the group are learning the progression point is super valuable, especially during ultimates. If you have set up a sufficient connection with a low latency and good quality, such as using a program like Parsec, where your nightman connects directly to one of the members playing, they can also participate in doing callouts for the team as if they were playing. The advantage to this is that the person from outside of the raid can fully focus on following the mechanics at hand, since there is no rotation or movement to be considered from their part. Having a good quality connection is also necessary to see the class bar names since a lot of mechanics in the game are based on either an ability name or an animation that the boss plays. It's also easier for the outside player to follow a timeline and call out what mechanics are happening next. The Nightman can also call out important mitigations from the mitigation plan to make sure nobody forgets an addle or a reprisal for an otherwise one-shotting raid wide. This video is really just a scratch on the surface of all the things you can do to make your raid experience better since there's always more to learn and more things to optimize. Each rage makes you think differently and adapt on what you've already learned. But that's what makes raid encounters and battle solving in Final Fantasy XIV so special. Thanks for watching.